Hey, what up, fam? It's your boy Norm, and I would like to welcome you to episode 64 of the Evangelical Norm. Um, today, I'm pretty excited about uh, what I get to talk about today, because today we are going to talk about Jackie Hill Perry, review her book, um, and kind of contrast it to another book that I just recently read. Um, I was going to do this in two separate episodes, but um, we're just gonna we're just gonna do it all right now. So, if you haven't gone out and copped this book, go get it and read it because it's good. It is ah, so many words that can be used to, to describe this book. It is poetic. Um, it is uh, God glorifying. It is. Um, amazing. Uh, uh, Jackie has a way with words. I mean, as if we didn't know that Jackie was going to have a way with words. I mean, she, we originally know her as a poet, um, doing spoken word stuff. I mean, anybody who knows who's been introduced to Jackie Hill Perry comes from, um, the spoken word initially and so we knew I mean this book was going to be amazing the the writing was going to be phenomenal um, which it is uh, so poetic so many I mean so many places that I just I mean tweeting page one of her introduction I mean and I tweeted out when I, I got here and I read this I was like this is page one y'all this is page one and she says, um, now I'll do a little more than what I, I did in the tweet because I'm not confined, constrained by characters now. But she says, uh, there are many who, while reading, won't understand gayness as something possible of being in the past tense. It is either who you are or what you have never been. To this I disagree. The only constant in this world is God. Gayness, on the other hand, can be an immovable identity only when the heart is unwilling to bow. That's where this whole thing started, and it gets better from there. So as she tells her story of, you know, from her mom meeting her dad, um, the non-relationship that they had uh, leading into a essentially a non-relationship with her dad and and again there's so many places in this book where I just I broke down and and just weeping um, and one of them was the the situation with her dad when he um, I wish I had gone through and marked these pages that uh, I intended to read from but and uh, so the situation with her dad says, uh, and, and here it is on, on page 32. And so initially I read through this and, and it, it wasn't something that immediately made me cry. It broke my heart. But um, he says, you know, I love you, right? And I looked away. Not in an attempt to spare him from the, the way skepticism was redirecting my, my face, but to keep him from knowing that he could affect me at all. Yes, I said. I am the way I am. I can love people and not really have to be around them. Like, I love you and all your siblings. He had two other children by his first wife. I love my wife, too, his third wife. But just the way I'm, but just the way I'm set up, if any of y'all ever wanted to stop speaking to me or wanted to leave me alone, I wouldn't care. I mean, it doesn't mean I don't love you. I just, it just wouldn't affect me. So this broke my heart because again, as a, a brand new dad of a little girl, I can't imagine these words. But then um, later that night, as we put my daughter to bed and I'm standing in her room and I'm singing, uh, along with Sovereign Grace Music, which is her, her bedtime playlist. And I'm singing these songs, and I'm singing these, these God-glorifying songs about, you know, the amazing father that, that, Vic, that Vicky, Jackie met 
um, and that I've known. And then just the, the love I have for my little girl, I couldn't imagine a father not wanting to be daily around his child, especially around his daughter. Um, so I, I stood in my room and I'm singing to my daughter and I'm rubbing her back and I'm just weeping over the, just the callousness of this man, um, who was, who was, uh, Jackie's dad. So again, amazing, uh, places that, um, things that happen in the book. So talking about, she gets on through her, talking about her mom and her mom finding out, um, that she was gay. Um, but then she, she gets into, um, where she got saved. And again, this was a, another spot where it just, I mean, it, it leaves you crying, but it leads you to worship. Um, so she talks about, uh, being in her room, um, being sober for a change, um, and the thoughts that are going through her head. What time do I have to work tomorrow? I'm going to have to call old girl to give me a ride. I wonder what, what her, how her mama doing. My mom are probably still mad at me for coming home high. Where's the remote? I'm going to see what else is on. She'll be the death of you. And she sat up and again, so this thought that comes in, or maybe it was God. And uh, she goes through this, this point of God meeting her in her room. And just, and I'm trying to find uh, the spot. And I tweeted it. And I, again, um, I should have highlighted these things. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, I'm not going to find it. But again, just the amazing thing where she, where God just invades her room. And it's not, not what it wasn't, you know, an amazing witness encounter from someone calling her to repentance, but it was God in his sovereignty reaching down into her room by herself and drawing her to himself and drawing her to a place of repentance. Um, here it is. Who gave mercy my address? or told it how to get to my room. Didn't it know a sinner lived in it? On the way down the hall, shouldn't the smell of idols kept its feet from moving any closer? Then I remembered the one verse from the, of the Bible that I knew by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The same Bible that condemned me held in it the promises that could save me. I just had to believe it. It being what it said about him, God. Jesus had the guilty in mind when he hung high and stretched out wide. On it, he died in my place for my sin. He, bare-bodied and faced it on joy, became a slaughtered lamb underneath the wrath of God. You wouldn't think his father would have better would have a better memory than that. Didn't he know that the wrath was mine, or even had my name on it? But he knew. His justice wouldn't allow him to forget. His love is what he wanted me to know and remember, and I did. What you are calling me to do, I can't do it on my own, but I know enough about you to know that you will help me, I said to God, my new friend. I didn't know that the confession of my inability to please him and shifting on my back, and the shifting of my back towards the sins I previously embraced was repentance. Nor did I recognize that my resolve to believe that he could, do, he could be to me what no one else could was faith. But it was, without asking me my permission, a good God had come to my rescue. <laughs> how, how do you how do you review a book like this? I mean, it's just, I mean, page after page after page, just leading you to to worship the great God that that reached in to this woman's room 
and drew her to himself. It's amazing. And then this was this last little bit, and she gets in, the last three chapters are, are just, it's all scripture and just reaching out to those who um, deal with, with same-sex attraction. Um, again, she goes through and she talks about not identifying as that, um, but understanding that there are people in the Christian world who still are tempted with that. And so she goes through, and one of the things Chapter 16 is same-sex attraction and endurance. And she talks about the fact that um, Jesus endured. And he, he endured the cross. And so in that, that she could endure. Um, and that those who um, deal with, with this temptation can endure. Um, and that essentially it's just um, Jesus didn't endure because he was strong he was most likely at one of the weakest points of his humanity but he endured because he loved his God therefore he was fully committed to doing the will of God no matter the cost this love is what will help us persevere a love that sees knowing God as the body's greatest pleasure. So, I mean, five stars, eight thumbs up, you name it. Um, the A plus 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 plus. And it, and again, it, it's it, you know, I know Jackie would even. Well, I don't know Jackie. But I, I feel like sometimes you feel like you know somebody and as you read and the way this book is written, she's going to take everything that I say and she's going to say Soli Deo Gloria. To God be the glory alone. And this book from beginning to end leads you to that, to that end, to the glory of God um, in the salvation of a woman and recognizing that that God can save any one of us. You know, I mean, same-sex attraction is not um, the end-all of, of sin. It's not the, the pinnacle sin. It's not any worse than any sin that, that any of the rest of us deal with. Um, we all deal with sin, whether it's anger, whether it's greed, whether it's lust, whether whatever, you know. Homosexual lust is no different than heterosexual lust. It's lust. It's sexual immorality. It's sin. Bottom line, that's what it is. And so, this book, where it's her story of being same-sex attracted, of being gay, and being saved... And again, she gets into the fact that, that God is not calling homosexuals to be heterosexual, to change. He's calling lost people to be saved. He's calling sinners to turn to their Savior, repent and put their trust in Him, and let Him do what He's going to do, whether that's take away the, the attraction or give them attraction to, to the opposite sex, or give them a the the gift of singleness. Whatever it is, it's God calling us to repent and then letting him be the one who changes us and or gives us the endurance and the ability to resist temptation. And that's where I want to take this and I want to compare it to another book that I just recently read. And again, even in this, in, in these two pictures, and looking over here, <laughs> in these two pictures of these two books, this one is all about Vicky. It's Vicky and her striving to find a way to indulge in her sin, to figure out how she might discredit scripture or 
twist translations and interpretations into making it like this is all fine. God just wants you. He's made you who he is. He just wants you to be who he wants you, who you are. And that's not scriptural. Jesus says it himself, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And Vic and Jackie hits that verse multiple times in this book, in this book over here, which is all about God. Again, Jackie's picture isn't on the front of this book. Vicky's is. Because this book over here, this is all about Vicky. This is all about her being able to be who she wants to be and not concern herself with what God calls her to be. And again, she goes through this book over here. This is all about looking at scripture and saying, okay, I am going to submit to what the word of God says. This one over here says, I'm going to search and study and find as many abstract and arcane and ancient peoples and translations and interpretations to say that it's okay to be gay. This one says, I recognize what the scripture says. God has saved me and I will submit to the word of God, to the glory of God. I mean, it's such similar stories. You've got two female entertainers, both of whom dealt with same-sex attraction. One who, I don't know that she ever truly knew God. I don't. From reading the book and the way that she pictures him and he was presented to her, I don't think she ever knew him. I don't think she was ever saved. I know that's harsh and people, but the way that it is written, her Vicky's God is a God who um, is scary, um, who was not scary, a God who just wants, and it's not, early on the picture of God was just the God that wants you to change your behavior to please him. And then she created another idol who says, just be who you want to be and be happy. And don't concern yourself with what is or isn't sin. The God of this book over here is the God that, like she said, without her permission, reached in, drew her to himself, saved her, and then put his Holy Spirit in her and gave and made her a new creation and gave her the ability to deny herself, to take up her cross and follow Christ. And as you read it, it wasn't easy. She struggled. She still dealt with temptation. She may still. But now she's married and a mom and, and glorifying God in every paragraph of this book and in her, her rap and in her spoken word. Every, every verse directs your eyes to the King of Kings that says, allow me to introduce myself and draw you to myself and save you. I am the... the it's the God that says, I will give you the ability to overcome. This one says, just do whatever you want and, and be who you think you're supposed to be, regardless of what my word says. Phenomenally different conclusions, but only one glorifies God. Only one of these two books gives glory and honor to God, the God who sees, the God who knows, and the God who reaches in and draws all men and women to himself and says, I will pay the penalty for your sin if you will just repent and trust 
in the work that I did on the cross. This is our Jesus. This book that, that, that she's written leads to Christ, beginning to end. Causes the heart to just want to worship as you read what God did for her. And, no, and, and then those of us who have had, I mean, not everyone has an amazing testimony like this. Again, we look in, and Paul talks about, uh, you know, it, well, in Revelation it says we are, um, we will overcome by the, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And Paul talks about, um, you know, his, uh, we contrast Paul's testimony with, with Timothy's. Timothy, who, who was raised up in the faith by his grandmother and his mother, and who, who from an early age was saved. And then Paul, who was a persecutor of Christians. Some people have a Paul-like testimony. Jackie most definitely does. And then there are those that, that have a very Timothy-like testimony, who from early on have, have known that they are sinners in need of a Savior. And we don't look at one as better than the other. One, no, one is not a greater Christian than the other. One just has a little more experience in different things than another. And has something that, that and in that, it gives them a, an understanding of some other people. But it doesn't mean anyone is a, you know, a better Christian or has a better evangelism opportunities or what. We all know the gospel. If we're saved, if you're saved, if God has saved you, you know the gospel. And it's simply put that men are sinners in need of a Savior. And God is a loving God who has given us a way to be saved from our sin. And it's Jesus Christ went to the cross and paid the penalty that we deserve. Who gave mercy my address? Jackie says. Does he not know that that wrath is mine? But yet he took it anyway. That's our God. Nowhere in my reading of Vicky's book did it lead me to want to worship any kind of God. It gave it made it, it caused me to pity those who will read it. And decide that they don't need to repent. Jackie's book did just, did just the opposite. It made me recognize the love that God has for, for man. That he, he, would be, he would go to the cross and take upon himself the penalty for our sin. Endure the wrath of the Father. On the cross. So that if we will just repent and put our trust in him that we too can be saved. Amen. Go pick up Jackie's book. Read it. Worship God along with her as you read the words that she wrote. <laughs> Stand amazed at the God that, that reached into a, a bedroom of a, of a lesbian woman thinking about her girlfriend and reached into that room and drew that lady to himself and saved her. Stand in awe of that God who can do that for you or who already has. Stand in awe of the God that did that for me. And praise him because he's worthy. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.